Welcome to the Strangers on the Way podcast. I'm so excited to have my first ever Catholic priest on the podcast, Roman Bertulo. Can you say Perfect. it? Can you say yeah, it's, it? Too? It's exactly this, Roman Bertulo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. It's, it's really good, really good. <laughs> I'll practice my French. Um, I met Roman when I was in France this summer. We worked um, at a youth a youth festival, youth gathering, um, serving the youth, and him and his community, the Shamanoff, were there. And Roman led us all around the whole week and shared stories and um, honestly made us laugh our tails off. Um, so I'm so honored to have you here. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So good. Could you start by sharing just a little bit about who you are, um, where you live, all the fun things okay. like that? Okay. So uh, I'm French, so I hope my English will be okay. Um, I'm currently living in a beautiful city uh, called Lyon, um, very ancient city uh, in the Roman Empire, uh, a long time before. And over there, I'm a priest uh, and I'm working in a school uh, for mainly for kids. Uh, yeah, very little kids just hmm. coming for the first time to school to to kids who are 15 years old. And I'm a member of a community, um, a Shemanev community, um, which which has like Catholics and people also from other denomination. And uh, we're six uh, people living in the school, uh, praying in the morning and in the, the evening in the school. And, uh, and it's a great, great ministry. I, I like it very much. It's so fun. What are your favorite things about the kids there? Um, you know, I love sometimes the kids, the way they interact with you. And sometimes they just, you know, they, they want to share with you, but they don't really know how. So they run towards you and they're like, you see their eyes, you know, like, I, I don't know if it's the right word, like a bit shining or glittering and, and they're just in front of you and they don't have anything to say, but they just want to be there. And so oh. we, we laugh a lot. We make a lot of jokes. Mm -hmm. And uh, and sometimes, well, sometimes you see uh, you're, you you witness, you know, uh, moments of grace, moments of encounters where they open their hearts and they share difficult stuff also, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's in the center of the city. So most of them are, you know, don't have so many problems, uh, apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. It's great. Oh, I love they it. give me a lot of joys. Yes, I bet. And then what do you do during the day with them? Are you like as priests there or are you in the classrooms or yeah so we have uh like they they all come during the day for uh what we call catechesis like a youth ministry mm -hmm. um and so sometimes we teach we pray together everything uh, and we also organize things for the teachers and I'm, I'm in charge also of other schools so sometimes once a week i i go to another place um and we have mass also so this is great, great moment. Sometimes the kids, they invite friends to mass that don't know anything. And, and, and they, sometimes they experience, yeah, something very deep and, mm. and meaningful for them. Wow. Um, and we also, so this is my best part. We organize also trips, uh, like, I don't know how you call this, not uh, like field trips, you know? Oh, yes. Uh, for example, you're. Uh, we, we just went yeah in the, the south of France hiking uh, on a on the road uh, walking on the roads with the kids uh, and pilgrimage yeah I don't know if this word mm. exists in English so yeah this is great we prepare this and they come with us and we do this also for teachers wow. um, because in order to to yeah to, to talk about Jesus to the kids you, you also have to convince the adults no yeah. that it's a good that it's good for everyone Yes. Oh, I love that. That's amazing. And you've done other missions too, because I know every member of Shamanov has a mission and it kind of mm -hmm. rotates. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You are well informed, Lauren. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really good guy no, when I've I was been, in France. <laughs> I've been, um, well, when I started with Shamanov community like 11 years ago, uh, I started with a youth mission, more like for kids from 18 to 30 years, 30 year old. Mm -hmm. um, so I did this in France, like organize, organizing events, like the festival you went to during the summer and things like this. 
um, retreats also where people come like for seven days and it's in silence. And now you're like, well, listen to God. How do I do that? Well, you have seven <laughs> yeah. days. We will, we will try. We will pray. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I did this in Spain also. Wow. And, and, it, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was Amazing. great. Okay. I'd love to hear about your childhood. I know you come from a bigger family. Yeah. Awesome. So what was it like? Like childhood? Okay. Yeah. Like what's it like growing up French? Okay. Well, <laughs> it's a <big> one. <laughs> and a blessing. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. So, um, well, I, I love the fact that my parents uh, both came from families who have had like Christian roots, but mm -hmm. stopped going to mass eventually. Mm hmm um, and my parents, like they met in Paris and they started uh, in this, this uh, like youth, Christian youth group. And they were like, you know, they had a real encounter with Jesus. My father, he was like on the bins standing up in Paris and like talking to people and everything. Wow. And my mother also. They were like 200%. Wow. Uh, and so this was really also important for their personal life. You know, they like... Uh, opened up as human beings. You no, know, there was really it's spiritual, but also very incarnated. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm making up a word or. No, yeah, yeah. Good. And so they met. They were passionate about Jesus. So this is really something important in our family. And like for my cousins, we're the weird family. You know, N nice, <laughs> nice and weird. They like us, but at the same time, like, what is this thing going on with Jesus? I mean, it's. Um, <laughs> and so I, I was born in this family. And I had re this really great encounter with uh, God as a father because I'm very close to my father and my father, he plays a lot with us. And, you know, he, he he's very, yeah, he's a great dad. And I remember when I was a kid, I had this experience, which now I realize it's really a gift. And it was the experience of a six-year-old, but it's still so vivid today uh, about God as a father and like of having this feeling that you are uh, his little favorite. So I'm the favorite of God, but also all the people listening to the podcast. Don't worry. We're all favorites. <laughs> yes. though, okay. But uh, so this, this was really special, you know, to feel this love, like of preference, you know, of God, yeah. like, like a good father. And this uh, marked my life. You know, it's like, it, it's something that can't be erased even after when I was far away from faith and everything. So I had for a long time, uh, four siblings. And then uh, we, we moved in a few countries. Uh, we lived in Ireland, Spain, uh, Denmark, and Spain. And when we were coming back to France, there was like a surprise. Uh, yeah, my mother was expecting a sixth kid. Wow. Yeah. At first, we weren't happy because every time my father worked in a plane company, and every time we took the plane, people were counting us, you know, one, two, three. <laughs> it, was, it was like, who goes on a plane with five kids, you know? And then we're, when we're six, I was like, oh, no, this is... <laughs> How are we going to do? We're, we'll have to hide her. No, we never did. <laughs> her name is Mary. And today she's, yeah, we love her. Oh, the little so we, we're like this big family. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, that's so nice that you had a like loving dad. Because I think that's sometimes a barrier to faith. People who didn't have that don't see how God mm. is um, loving and kind. So yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, it was really amazing. And then how did you hear of the Shamanoff and how did you decide to become a priest? Wow, a big question. Um, Shamanoff, my parents um, had like this encounter when I was little. We were living in south of France, I think, and they they were invited in a, to a prayer group. And they entered and they saw people like singing and putting hands on the shoulders, you know. So they entered and I think three minutes after they were gone. You know, like, what is this weird way of praying? And a few years later, they did a retreat for couples. Like, it's called Kana. It's it's really great, you know, for taking time for your couple with God and everything. And they met the community there. And I was there. Um, but, you know, in, in, in my community, we're, like, dressed, like, white and brown or beige uh, so that people can recognize us. And we have this little cross. And everybody is smiling. And I think I was, like, 12 or 13 year old and I at the end of the week I, I went to the parents and I told them I think this is like a cult sect you know it's I think this is dangerous I saw I saw things on the TV people smiling all dressed the same <laughs> beware but no it was a community Christian community everything is okay and uh, so I knew I, I liked the place I, I, I liked the, their theology 
it's it's weird saying this, but I remember I, I thought this when I was young. Like I, I felt it was a solid ground, uh, but at the same time, I, I didn't have any Christian friends, you know. So I knew this place existed. I did a few camps, summer camps, or things like this that it was import were important, but I never quite continued with them. Uh, and it was more like at the end of my studies, um, where where I, I, I was moving um, from one city to another, from Paris to Nantes. And they had like those places where you can rent a room uh, when you're studying. And I went there, I called the priest there. I said, can I just come like two weeks uh, just to find another room in the in the city? And he said, yes. And he when I, ent when I was there, there were also other young people. And the priest said, um, if you go every morning to this prayer that was happening, uh, which is called uh, Laudes, if you go to this prayer every morning, it will change your life. And I was so eager for a change in my life, you know. So I stayed in this place and each morning I was there to the prayer. It was, the, the songs were really bad, you know, but when God is calling, you know, you, you just come mm -hmm. and it's great. Yeah. And then I, yeah, it's, God called me through this community. Mm. Um, and it was the first time I had like brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, yeah. so it was really, really big deal for me. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I was so moved by the community. I got to be with them in France and then Latvia this summer. And I was so moved at the like genuine friendship and, and just being together. And I told the, the Latvia community afterwards, like I've, I've been praying to God for the for a couple months like god i want to know what it was like when the disciples were in acts and like what the community was like and it says like they ate together broke mm. bread listened to the teaching worshiped and they gave to all who had need and i was like wow this community is so much i feel like like what it was and mm. to see the brotherhood and sisterhood and like honor and service it really really marked me so that's really neat that yeah, you got yeah, the call it's, then. It's true that it's uh it's very similar to the first Christian communities. Yeah. Because like there's married couples and people living celibacy for the kingdom. There is uh, a yeah. people from a lot of nationalities, um, different age, different social group. This is very important for me, you know, that the church isn't like just one social category. Yes. Uh and we're we're in a lot of countries, but uh we're still living this. I hope we can do it for a long time. We have one, um, of course, we have different bank accounts, but we have one um, one account for everybody. So we, we share, for example, each month, I ask the community, well, I will be needing, uh, I don't know how much money, you know, and they give it to me. And, and the money I receive from the school I'm in, you know, they pay me. So I give it all. And then I ask what I need, what I need each month. And this sharing, I think, is very important. Mm -hmm. And I feel, you know, uh, there is a lot of communities in the in the in the church, you know. And when I say church, like the church, the body of Christ, no. Mm -hmm. And each community has a charism. Uh, it's like each one of us, you know, when the Lord puts us together for a mission, it's because we all have like this charism and uh, this that diversity. And I was thinking about this, like in September, and because you have communities, you know, in our church, like wow, the charism of poverty. You know, they 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 walk nearly barefoot. They ask for their food. I mean, it's wow. a bit of, and I was thinking, well, yeah, what is our charism? And two things from two different people I, I respect a lot. The two answers that came were first sharing hmm. and sharing also, you know, when I lived in Spain, people came in the house for one day a week sharing our, for, for example, in the festival, you know, we're living together. Of course, there is, uh, you know, everybody knows where they sleep, where it's mm -hmm. it's not confusing, but share, sharing our way of life, sharing who we are. Mm -hmm. And also one thing I think very important, and maybe I, I, it was, I wasn't so, so conscious about this. Uh, it's something we try to live on. Let's be a bit modest, but it's fraternity. And it's true, for example, you know, in our community, like once a week, we have this time during mass where there is no preach, but we go and we... We can go and see each other either to reconcile or just to talk, you know, because we have to talk to explain ourselves or or to say thank you. And I feel, yeah, this is 
And sometimes it can be really hard, you know, because uh, one thing is an obstacle, which is outside. Okay, wow, uh, there is the world and it, there is the life with Jesus. But one thing is an obstacle, which is inside, like, for example, with a sister or a brother. Maybe you can live this when you're in a couple or when you're married, you know, like the first time it's easy to say, I'm sorry. But like the hundredth time for the same thing, you're like, no, I don't want to <laughs> say I'm sorry. But yeah, this is where, you know. Christ is waiting yeah. for you. Yes. It is amazing, like, um, how there were spaces for students to, sh to sh come confess as well. And I learned, I don't know if I learned it from that week, but their mental health is better. And I think it's because you're, like, actually sharing your light, like, nothing's hidden. Mm -hmm. And so same with like the reconciliation it's like there's no barrier to mm -hmm. your conscience in some mm -hmm. ways um but i imagine that's really difficult because sometimes people just like you're out of my life and yeah, that's it <laughs> but yeah, you guys yeah. are all living together and so that's beautiful that that's a part of the community well two uh, two example mm -hmm. uh first thing there there is this like spiritual guide i like he, he was living in the sixth century he's called ignatius of loyola and he he basically like sums up a lot of things that the monks the disciples the apostles they 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 lived and everything from the scriptures from the tradition of the church and and when he, he he talks he has this point where he talks about the secret you know and he says like the devil he likes the secret he, li he likes everything that is hidden and w when it's hidden it has power over you also and sometimes it's true, like coming to light, for example, me as a priest, when somebody comes to confession, so I'm a young priest, it's like just my second year, you know, but when somebody comes to confession and really, really, you know, say, says the, the truth, I mean, not like I was expecting anything, but you feel that the guy, he, he really puts his life there, you know, he, he, yeah. and it's so, uh, it's really moving and, and, and in you, and in me, who, who is a sinner and everything, I, I don't feel any judgment, you know? I feel like really love at this point. Like, and I imagine, well, if I feel this, I don't know what God feels, but it's much, much bigger. Yeah. And, and so this, I think, is a, is a great thing. Uh, yeah, to, to come to the lights. And also the part of our lives where we struggle and when, where we're a failure, you know? And we all have, we all have. Nobody is above this. There isn't like, I'm a priest. I'm, I've... Everything is under control. And no, no, we all have. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, um, well, I was doing this yesterday and I, you know, I, I received like a letter from a, from a, a brother and saying, well, okay, Roman, uh, thank you for this year we spent, but I'm sorry about this because I felt like uh, I, I, I didn't go a hundred percent in the fraternity and everything. And he wrote this during a retreat or something. And wow. so. So, okay, uh, now we don't live together. Of course, we can say, well, it's over or it doesn't matter. But so yesterday I was like, okay, now I have to answer, you know, uh, yeah. and, and I feel going, uh, trying, doing our best uh, in this reconciliation process is really meaningful. And I think it's very meaningful for God also, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, it's a challenge. <laughs> yes. No, it's amazing. It's like, it does seem like the pinnacle, like before he even goes to the cross, like his whole mm -hmm. prayer is that we would be one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but to be able to like be humble enough to go to someone or admit fault or mm. yeah, it's, that's big. For, for me, it's the, when I live something like this, I feel it, it costs me. I don't know, you know, it costs yeah. something. Uh, a, a bit like the cross the logic of the cross it's this uh, but I feel it's uh, it's uh, those moments of uh, verification of, uh, it's here that the Lord is waiting for me mm. more even more than like preaching or you know yes. it's th those little moments uh, you know okay I'm a sinner or I, there's are things I do badly but am I yeah am I able to say okay I'm sorry or to yeah and sometimes it takes time. Sometimes yeah. it takes time. There was reconciliation. I had, you know, two years of process to be able to say, uh, um, 
yeah, to really say, okay, I forgive you, you know, mm -hmm. in a way. Yes. Yeah. That's powerful. Yes, there's a cost to it. There's also a cost to being a priest because you discerned not to be not to be married, right? Yeah. And how did that process go? And how did you feel God leading you to that? I just think it's fascinating. And yeah. Yeah, so um, it went well. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> I am not... <laughs> We will see, you know, at the end of my life. I mean, it's like for every vocation, even in, in when you're married or, you know, it's, mm -hmm. will I go, will I be able, Lord, to, to go to the end of my years and to be faithful? And wow, you know, I, I saw the, the couple of my parents and if they are today together still, it's really because of God, but yeah. it's a bit of mystery, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it's for me, you know, before, it, it's not so much about being a priest, which in the church has always been also, of course, a personal call, uh, a vocation, but it's mm -hmm. also a service. Uh, you are a priest because we need a priest, you know. For yeah. example, you can imagine a monastery. If there's like 30 guys, uh, you, you're not going to have 30 priests. I mean, you don't need 30 priests. You need four. So only four will be priests. So in, in our tradition, it's more like married or uh, celibacy. And mm -hmm. today, of course, uh, and and what is stronger than this? And it's my vocation of uh, being baptized. No, so this mm -hmm. is like nothing bigger than this. You know, we we all have this this call you now to follow Christ as baptized, mm -hmm. uh, married, celibacy, or yeah, whatever we're living. Um, so for me, as I told you, I was like really marked with the love of God as a father. Mm -hmm. It was very important. And I felt, you know, I felt this was this love was really strong, and I wanted to follow him radically. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I went to the church. I saw the priest. And I said, oh, I would love to be like the priest. And five mm -hmm. seconds after, no, never, please, please. Oh, <laughs> no. And I, I, I put a bit this question under the the rug, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it came back when I was eighteen, and I really heard. Uh, I, I was in a retreat and. As, yeah with, with my class well long story but and there was this guy a young priest and I was really moved by by some moments um, yeah I remember I wrote a big letter to him after um, and, and I also had this uh, yeah this word of God that Jesus says to the Samaritan woman you know if you knew the love of, of God yeah. and if you knew who was the one asking for water you would be the one asking for it you know and he yeah. would give you water of eternal life. Um, and so I felt like Jesus was talking in a general manner over my life, but also on this topic, like St. Roman, if you knew who I was, uh, if you knew what mm -hmm. that my path is happiness, really, you mm -hmm. would be the one like asking me, begging me. Um, so then I had all my years in Paris as a student quite far away from God. I, I'm, I'm really the, the dumb Christian. I mean, I had to <laughs> see that it doesn't work without God, you know? Hmm. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. So this is, for me, it's really my experience. God is salvation, you know? It's not just a personal coach for a better life. No, it's life or death. That was my experience. Um, yeah, so so I had this desire inside. And, and then there was like a lot of, um, how do you call this? A, a lot of moments, you know, before saying yes, because... Like the summer before um, committing to celibacy for the first time, I, I was talking to her sister and it was like in my head, but how can you say yes? I mean, you can have this desire in your, your yeah. Um, there was two moments, if I uh, sum it up. The first moment is uh, let God be God in your life. And it, it meant like uh, listen to him. And it, it was very a special moment, like saying, okay, um, of respect, you know, uh of uh, well okay I, I won't go too too much into this because it's going to take us too much time but and and the second moment was really um um yeah i heard this weird phrase of a sentence uh it was a monk saying to live an experience that costs um vivre une aventure vivre une aventure qui ne va pas de soi et qui coûte à chaque instant to live an adventure that that is not so natural in a way. I'm sorry, the translation isn't good, but, and that costs. 
Mm-hmm. And and I really felt there was something here for me. Like, I want to live this. I, I want to, I don't know. I think God at- attracted me in this in this way of life. If if I was born in the 16th century, I wouldn't have been in the Shemenev community. I would have been in a Cartesian community, but I would have lived this celibacy. Um, and I came back from this big retreat in silence and everything. And I opened up, uh, so I'm, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say this on video, but uh, okay. <laughs> oh. uh, so I, I opened up uh, Facebook, you know, and there was this uh, beautiful girl on Facebook and, and a good friend of mine. And I felt inside of me, you know, a, a burning fire, like, wow, she's beautiful. And I, I would love, you know, to, mm-hmm. to may- maybe, yeah, do my life with her. Uh, well. Yeah. And at the same time, I had uh, this inner image of uh, Christ on the cross, which is the less marketing uh, image possible, you know, Christ on the cross. I mean, who, who wants to live this? Nobody. <laughs> and at this, and, and this Christ on the cross, I was, uh, uh, I, I was really moved. You know, I felt like I love him. If I have one life, this is what I want to live, you know, to be just for him next to him. And so this was very important for me because it's not like I'm a weird human being and, and I, I, I didn't consider uh, getting engaged in a relationship with a woman, for example. But yeah. it's more about preference, you know? Yeah. I felt my preference was there. Um, and I felt this is my calling. Yeah, this is what Jesus asks me. And he, he asked this, not to everybody, yeah. for some people in the gospel, for Paul, for example, it's, it's present in the letters of Paul, it's present in the gospel. Um, yeah, and I felt like, okay, if I have one life, this is what I want to live. This this kind of, I don't know if this comparison with poker is a good thing, but this kind of all in, you know, mm-hmm. on Jesus. Yes. And it's true that my life has no meaning if Jesus doesn't exist, you know, because there is this gap. Uh, but at the end of the day, for example, when you've worked and you go home and you can imagine for some people, there's, I don't know, a family welcoming them or everything. Yeah. Of course, there is this, this part of, solitude that can be there but for example i i love this very much like you, you go to adoration you go to a prayer during mm-hmm. uh during the night you know and you're just here in this place praying with god and i feel there is a, this there is in a way a, a, an emptiness it's true uh and i think this is like every human being share this feeling at some point even if you're married you know you, you have yeah. this yeah but i feel uh, the lord is here you know and and this, um, in a way, when people see my life, it can seem unbalanced, uh, even though there is the fraternal life, even though I have brothers and sisters in Christ. But but because Christ is here, it's it's also a place where I grow as a human being. Mm. Uh, and this is very important. You know, it's not just spiritual stuff like I'm inventing myself a love story. It's it's true, and I experience it. And after ten years, I can say it's it's a good path for me. The church says also it's a good path for you. You can continue. But it's, uh, yeah, at, at the root of all this, there is a passionate love for Jesus. And it's true. Nobody loved me as him. And, uh, yeah, there was this, I'll finish with this. There was this, uh, you know, in, in this journey, there's moments of crisis, moments of exodus, uh, sometimes very strong. And I received this little card from an old monk. And he told me, um, God is faithful till the end, and He comble jusqu'au bout, and He fills. It's it's bad translation, but He fills uh, you over. You know, uh, He uh, and He said, "You can believe me." After my little experience of fifty-six years of monastic life and celibacy, also, you know, uh, yeah. So this was very important for me. And, yes. Yeah. Wow. It's beautiful. But but it's, yeah, sorry, Lauren. Some, no. some people, you know, they see the sacrifice. They see, wow, you're not going to have kids. And it's true. It's a sacrifice, you know, and maybe yeah. even bigger for sisters uh, of our community who are living celibate. You're, I'm not going to experience the, the love also of having a wife, for example. You know, it's you are somebody to somebody, you know, yeah. there is this special love and everything. Um, But... Why was I talking about this? Um, yeah, but God is here. This is one thing. Well, 
sorry, I lost uh, track of um, it will come back. what I was saying. It will come you said, back. Like, you won't have kids, yeah. like you won't have kids or the somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But... Oh yeah, but people see the sacrifice, but um, the sacrifice is a little part. It's true, it's here, but it's a little part because I see, um, you know, the the love, passionate love. It's like when somebody uh, marries, mm -hmm. and you tell him, oh. I'm so I'm sad for you and people some people have like I have a, this cousin who likes me very much and she's sad for me every because she doesn't know Jesus so so it doesn't make sense for her and you know imagine you have a good friend getting married and you're like I'm so sad for you because you have to renounce all the women of the earth you know it's <laughs> so sad but the guy the guy is here of course in my choice there is a part of renouncement I don't know if of yeah but what I see is what I'm getting you know mm. and I'm winning the big prize and this is what I think, you know, I'm, um, of course, there is, there will be difficulties, there is a renouncing, but for me, 98% is, uh, hey, I'm, I made the best choice, Yeah. in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so beautiful. I feel like the, there's the depth to your relationship with Jesus, that, um, at least in the United States, sometimes um, faith can be like, um, I don't know. It's like, I don't know if people have actually tasted Jesus. Like, um, they go to church, but it doesn't, I don't know if they have a relationship with Jesus. So like, mm -hmm. how have you cultivated that? Like there, there's an evident love <laughs> that you have, mm -hmm. like you really know him. And how has that happened? Um, I think, I, I don't know. I, I think, uh, well, there was this, like what my parents gave me. Um, but also, um, it's, it's a uh, heart to heart, you know, uh, it's cross, uh, it's crossing his gaze, you know, his, um, uh, one thing that helped me a lot was, uh, those retreats I lived, uh, okay. in silence. Uh, and four times a day, you pray with the Bible. And if God doesn't show up, nothing happens. So he has to show up. Yeah. Um, but I think he, yeah, I think it's God touches your heart, you know, and he's so, uh, yeah, he's, he's passionate about every one of us. And every one of us is a unique love story. The only thing God once asks, one day there was this priest who said this, he said, do you want to live a big love story? You know, who doesn't want, you know, this mm -hmm. and God needs our, I think God needs our desire. And, and sometimes we settle, uh, we extinguish our desire or we are afraid that we're going to be disappointed mm -hmm. because uh, it will happen in a way that will be different in, in a sense. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I think it's 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 beautiful when you can experience that you are chosen, that you are you are you are once among many. I mean, God has a lot of children, but I'm special for Him. Um, how do you live this? I, I think if I had to give a very short answer, is uh, close your eyes right now, or, or open your eyes as you want, and just say, "I'm here, I'm here," and I, I. I want to experience you. I'm here and I love you. I'm here and, and, and show me, you know, and, and God, he says like, I mean, he, he's, he opened the eyes of the blind and the ears of the deaf people. So normally you won't be too much of a, well, he, he can manage with you. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I think God, God is a person, you know? And so sometimes we repeat hundred times the same thing, but he heard you. So, Maybe the best counsel I can give is treat him as a person. <laughs> mm. and, and once you've said it, you've said it. He knows. So he knows, you know, and sometimes stop talking because, you know, so it's uh, yeah. um, it's the, the greatest analogy analogy in the Bible is the Bible of a fiancé, you know. And it's funny that God uh, often doesn't use uh, a married couple. You know, some, some Jewish scholars, they say, because. A married couple, sometimes there is something like installed, well, which is which isn't completely true. But fiancé, <laughs> fiancé, uh, I don't know. It's if you have this in America, it's just before getting married, you know. Yeah. 
we we start getting engaged. So there is this part of of uh, you, you have to seduce a bit the other, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so with God, it's the same part. It's the best analogy in the Hebraic Bible in the First Testament. It's not so much like God as a father and you as a son. It's not so much God as a teacher and you as a student. It's God as a young and passionate uh, fiancé. I don't know how you say this in English. And and you at the other end also. So, yeah. 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 It's beautiful. Okay. No, I love it. It's so good. It's so true. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. Could you share, um, when I first heard about you guys go on silent retreat, sometimes a day or seven days or... 40 days, I think. 30 um, days, yeah. 30, 30. I um, got scared because <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, to be in silence. Sometimes being in silence for 30 minutes is scary. <laughs> um, what, yeah. like, what has God done in you in those? How, how do they, ha how do they happen? I just, it's really neat. And um, I think a lot of the community members talked about the impact mm. of the retreats on mm. their lives. So I'd love to hear about that too. So the logic behind it's really what you find in the prophet Hosea. Hosea, yeah. Uh, it's I will. God talks about his people as a fiance, and he said, "I will bring her to the desert, and I will talk to her heart to heart." So sometimes you have to live this experience of the desert, where there is silence around you, so that there can be silence uh, inside you, and it often takes a few days. And there is not so much many distractions. There is also a certain poverty also, you know, so God will, will have to show up as God. Uh, so going to the desert, n nobody really wants to go to the desert <laughs> because it's, it's like going on a hike, you know, you know, you're there will, there will be this part where, well, okay, I have to go, you know, I have mm -hmm. to decide. It's not so easy. Um, but, but at the same time, uh, God is really waiting there and he will provide. Uh, so the silence is an important part of this because all those thoughts, all those things inside me, um, sometimes they parasite a bit. Parasite, they're they're, yeah, they, they take too much place, you know. And so it's this logic of Shabbat also to calm down and make room for God, you know, make silence for God to hear Him more deeply. Um, there are two things I can say. It's with the scripture, because God talks. One of the best ways that God talks is with the scripture. So, and each year, it's incredible. You know, like for, for example, each year I pray for the same text at some point, like uh, the angel going to Mary and saying, hi, uh, you have been chosen. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't. I mean, I've, I've prayed with this text, I don't know how many times. And each year, God highlights a different part. And each year, four times a day, you pray with the text. And sometimes we even have a little prayer group at the end of the day. And there is like this coherence. Uh, God saying something very clearly. Uh, so at first, I was very stressed. You know, how am I going to hear the voice of God? And I was a bit tense. And I tried to do everything good. And um, even during pauses, I was praying. And okay, very tiring, please. Uh, and then I, I realized that the way God talks to me and and little by little, you start recognizing God's voice. And so you can pray and you can also chill. It's so nice. There's silence. You're in beautiful nature, for example. You know, it's also a part of vacation. I take long naps, you know, because mm -hmm. often you're tired. So, yeah, great. Um, so God talks through the word of God. And there is also Ignatius. Uh, his life is is great, but... I, enfin, his life is incredible uh, because he really um, made his own way, you know, mm. and he, he, he really, uh, yeah, he really learned in his life how to discern the voice of God. And one thing he says is God speaks through the Bible. We said this, but he also speaks through uh, what's happening inside. So, um, okay, I'll, I'll try to explain this in a very quick way. So if you're a normal human being, normally your, your life is like this, you know? Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, okay? It, we're, we're like this. So if you're like this, it's you're an AI or you're, you know, it doesn't, you're in, yeah, you're not human, okay? And, and 
and and God sometimes will give us what he calls consolation. So it's more peace, more joy, more faith, more hope, okay? And the devil sometimes will speak through us through what we call a desolation. So everything is gray, everything is hard. And so, Ignish, uh, when I'm reading a, uh, a passage of the Bible, uh, sometimes a, a word will have meaning for me or, or an idea is going to give me... Um, uh, something in my, in my heart, you know, peace, more peace, more joy. So, yeah, more or less, it's hearing the voice of God through all this. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, yeah, well, okay. I'm, no, I'm keep sharing. This is so good. <laughs> it's rich. And, um, yeah, so he, he has a whole pedagogy uh, or he has a whole teaching of how to hear God with, with those inner feelings I'm going to get, uh, how resisting to the de devil and how hearing God. Mm. Um and so it's 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 very good retreats, for example, when you have a choice to make. Uh, and and the retreats, it starts like for when it, when you live this for seven days, it starts with the love of God. And, and you have this moment also. It's a moment, very powerful moment when we're going to talk about sin, you know. And so sin, nobody likes to talk about sin. Um, so we're going to talk about sin. But you're going to ask something very weird to God. You're going to ask him for the revelation of your sin. Hmm. So normally you're like no i know myself i know my sins yeah but what you know it's sins with an s you know in plural you know the manifestation of sin but hmm. um there is also sometimes a root something deeper you know there's this place and it's not so much moral moral uh like oh you shouldn't do this or this it's more on a relationship level you know hmm. and we're all hurt in a way i mean human normal life but sometimes we we choose to believe something or yeah so this is very powerful moments you know in in your journey with god um, and people discover that i mean it's the best thing possible you know that god shows you this place where you're separated where where you're not choosing him when you're yeah because he doesn't in a way when you're like, yeah, I found my sin. It's great. You know? <laughs> it's no, but it's true. It's in a good yeah. way. Yeah. It's in a good way. I mean, he, he he's God. He, he he's not here to to make you feel miserable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. I don't no, know where I, I love, went, but I, I did so my best. <laughs> no, it's powerful. Yeah. Um, how I'm curious, like, um, as you say, like it's. God reveals it and it's like so he can heal is my guess like mm -hmm. what's the process been for you where you have a revelation of some brokenness and then what yeah so it's it's not finished huh? uh, sometimes I hear um, for example for me there was this uh yeah, there was an important moment when I when I started with the community uh, at the beginning of my path. Um, well, which moment will I share? I, I'm gonna. <laughs> um, there are there are a few things. For example, um, one day I was praying. I, I will start. Uh, I have two examples, and we will see if we we say if we speak about both of them or not. Uh, the first example, I, I was in a retreat, and I was praying with this. Um, text of the the rich young man you know who goes to see jesus and said uh, what should i do to have eternal life and 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 jesus says uh well give everything and follow me and everything and i was praying with this and and i was asking jesus show me show me the place where where i prefer prefer something to you you know uh sh show me the place where where i'm I i'm not willing to let go of something uh um, I, I'm doing the short version without betraying, I hope, the spiritual exercise of Ignatius. And I had this word coming in my heart. I, I don't know if it's an English word, approbation, approbation of others. Uh, uh, ah, I don't know how you say this. It means okay. the approval, approval of others. Oh, approval. approval. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And and this, this for me was so true, you know. And so yeah. during this day of retreat, you go and see another person. You talk to this person for like half an hour and you say, well, this is what I live during the day. This is what God is telling me. And, and I told them this. I tell, wow, for me, um, this approval of others is so important, you know, and sometimes it takes the place of God, you know. Yeah. And of course, 
behind. There is a security that I'm searching for. There is, and and God is okay. God says, yeah, for some part of your life, maybe you were living in insecurity. Maybe you didn't have confidence in yourself. And it's a path, and and you needed this approval of others, you know. And now, now it's the time to, now it's the time to grow. Now it's the time where you can be free, more free. Will I be ever free of this? I don't know, but more free, you know. Mm -hmm. And and then the next day we talked about sin, and for me it was clear, you know. So I I I, I know all the consequences of this, and I know all the things I did wrong, but more more profound in a more profound way, saying, okay, Lord, I present to you this need of approval. Uh, of acting so that others will say it's good, you know, and and sometimes um, when it's only you watching, uh, you're <laughs> what you think. Uh, I don't care so much, you know. I don't care so much that others, what others are going to think, you know. Mm. Um, and yeah, and this is for life. Mm. I think a life free of judgments. It's great, you know. Everybody wants this. Um, and and sometimes God shows you that this is linked with a. Um, with things more profound uh, of your history. Uh, I, I'm saying this, but, you know, every year I, I live this seven days retreat and sometimes it's it's quite simple, quite natural. Other times it's more profound. It's it's normal, no? God, yeah, God, um, yeah is, is a good God and sometimes he gives you a break also. Because there are... <laughs> um, but, yeah, for example, I, I, one of the first retreats I lived in, um, I have a great mother, you know, which, but she took a lot of space and she had very clear ideas of what has to be done. And she, she wasn't a great a psychologist, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so <laughs> I remember I, I, at some point I realized, but it was really a path, you know, that one of my childhood uh, wounds um, was, I've told this to my mother, if she watches the video, she will know. No, but it was like this feeling of not being, Take not being taken into account, mm. uh, not being considerate enough. You know, I, I was, you know, I, I'm, uh, for example, you're a teenager and uh, how you, the shoes you wear are so important because uh, your identity is linked with the shoes, you know, so, so strange. But at some point of our life, I don't know if you live this, but I live this yeah. in France, you know, but for my mother, it wasn't important. So, but for me, it was important, those shoes, uh, little yeah. things like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so this is a wound and it's great to see it because it's there and it has a lot of ramification with a lot of part of your life. And a lot of the way I act is because, um, I, for example, sometimes a, a certain violence, you know, or a way of, of being in a team or at work and, and just, just letting God in and saying, okay, it's here. Seeing this, so some people, uh, they pay uh, a lot of money uh, to the psychologist to see this, and it's great. And some people, they do both, the retreat and the psychologist, and it's great also. Mm -hmm. But seeing it is only halfway, you know? And I remember seeing this and saying, and now what? I mean, where am I going to heal? Yeah. Where am I going to heal? And for me, so this is my experience. It's not a, I'm not a universal teacher. Uh, okay. But my experience is healing is in the word of God. Wow. And I, I, I'm not so, I, I don't know, you know, I, I didn't do a psychology studies, but I don't know how they heal the psychologists, for example. I think revealing is great, but how do you, how do you build up again? Yeah. And the word of God. And for example, for me, it was the word of Isaiah. Uh, when I received it, it was so little. It was so, you, you could pass by and not notice this word, you know. It, it wasn't big revelation. I was in fire and everything. No, little. It says, you are mine. Mm. Uh, you are mine. And you know, after it's, if you go through fire, I will be with you. And, but you are mine. And with this, you, I'm, you are mine. For me, it wasn't like you are mine. I'm, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm keeping you. But it's you are mine. Like you're in security. You are mine. I, I'll watch over you. I care for you. I'll provide for you. Uh, even if you go in the wrong path, I'm here. I'm, I won't let you go. You know, you are mine. And so for me, uh, this is one example. Uh, and it's never finished, but uh, of the word of God, it heals. You know, it's, it can do something that, yeah. Wow. Okay. So I revealed some important parts of my life. Yeah. Um, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people could resonate with those 
including myself. So thank you. And I, I know what, exactly what you mean. I've been in Isaiah lately and it's just like God saying like comfort, comfort my people. Mm -hmm. And like, it's just so tender. And I think um, my dad was not the most tender dad. Mm -hmm. And so to see like God is tender has been like such a healing thing. So thank you for sharing your process. Cause I think sometimes as humans, we're like, I don't want to look at the scary negative yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it's actually the process to mm. go into freedom. So, but sometimes something I'm, I'm, I'm learning currently. So it's quite fresh. It's sometimes we, we see the cross in our life or we see difficult things in our lives or, and we just have one goal. It's to go over this, you know, it's, it's like a, to get out of Egypt. Now. <laughs> Finally over with this, you know, and, and I feel um, sometimes, you know, we're sinners and we want to be uh, in the just zone, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he came for sinners he, and he didn't come for the just, he came for the sinners, you know, and there is also a part of acceptance that to live in your old, in your own rumbles, runes, runes, um, some things you will be uh, delivered from some things you will be cured from some some things will be perfect uh, you know restored completely and other things uh, you're just here uh, at the foot of the cross you know he says like um you know it's it strikes me when when he says i'm going to die and 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 he says uh, take uh, the one who wants to be the first he's going to be the you know the servant of all and and he brings a child and he says you have to be like this child you know and in a way, uh, you can be um, fragile, you can be vulnerable, you can be imperfect because Christ is here with you. You know, he's your security. Uh, because if, if you uh, are waiting for this moment when finally I don't need God anymore <laughs> because I'm cured, it's over, I'm, I'm not, everything is restored, I, I, I'm not sure it will happen. And, yeah. and the logic of yeah, and the logic of the cross, it's a bit like, yeah, I'm. he calls me today as I am, imperfect, to say yes, to not just live centered, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, to live for others, but as I am, and, and I need you, and I still need you today, and tomorrow you will show me something, and the goal is not to be perfect, I mean, it will, I don't know if it will come one day, yeah, well, okay, this is a... Just sharing what I'm living, actually, but no, uh, it's so good. I think you're like so spot on because I found as I go in deeper relationship, I actually am more needy for mm. him, and it is like I think that's like I, like what it means when his grace is sufficient in our weakness. Mm, exactly. Because we're yeah, like exactly. I think his goal is union with us, and then as a bride and as the church so that's mm. so powerful mm. it stopped mm. yeah 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 it's like you know this there's this word in the scripture like blessed the poor uh the poor in spirit or the poor and the kingdom is theirs but it's in the present you know yeah like blessed the poor why, why blessed the poor and and sometimes your the christian life it starts when when uh, i I experienced that my generosity wasn't enough, that my all my wealth or all that I am great, but yeah, to, to live as a poor, you know, and mm -hmm. because, and it's poverty is not a, a good thing in absolute. It's, it's a good thing if he is here, you know, if he gives. Yeah. So this is a great uh, to talk about it, but then living it is much more complicated <laughs> <laughs> because we don't like poverty. We want to be perfect. We want to be strong, be beautiful, intelligent. Yeah, no. Yes. Okay. So good. Oh, that's amazing. Um, you had mentioned a, like a value or a passion of yours is unity within family. Mm -hmm. Could you share more about that? Uh, yes. Um, so my, my parents, they love each other very much, but, uh, when I was a kid, they had dispute, uh, disputes. I don't know how you say they, yeah, like arguments. Got arguments yeah arguments and everything so it could be a bit violent in the house you know and and we as kids um with my siblings 
we we had this you know it's one of my regrets of my life of my very old life is uh, <laughs> as a teenager for example i i had arguments a lot of with my siblings or or i i left i left them alone you know in the school bus for example today i say ah it's so sad i i should have been next to my little sister you know to care for her but no no i left her all alone and i was in another place and everything and so yeah we, we had struggles and and uh, we witnessed um, a big uh, argument in the family of my mother, you know, and um, and we, we we saw this family a bit falling apart. Um, and I remember it struck us as kids, you know. Uh, so I was like maybe seventeen at this point. My big brother was eighteen, and he came to me and he asked for forgiveness. He he asked, said, "I'm sorry for this and this." And, and it was so important, you know, and um, and and we had this really great moment. And I then I could live this. I lived this with other, well, all my siblings at one point, you know, this moment of truth where you, you're out of childhood. And uh, the best thing is to live this before they get married, because when once they get married, you, um, it's more difficult you know, to see each other and to have this moment, just only the two of us. Yeah. And so. I experienced this in my family from a very a family uh, which was quite divided inside to a family now that has really a strong unity. And it's not a strong unity like we get along. It's because really, I think each of us, we lived our own path. And with Jesus, it's true. Uh, but also we were able to to live this forgiveness. And, and I, I often tell this story with one of my little brothers. I think you met him uh, in Welcome yes. to Paradise. Yeah, okay. So he was really my enemy, you know, Cain and Abel, you know, it's really, when we were kids, we, we kind of, uh, uh, struggled, um, wrestled, uh, well, uh, yeah. Okay. And so my main goal when I was a teenager, you know, was to dominate on him. And, and when I was far away, he would say things. And when I was close, okay. And nothing very good. Um, and at some point as young adults, we just didn't talk so much, you know, there was no relationship. And Tristan, he was in Chimenev uh, as a young guy uh, before me. And he played a really important role. And, and we started, you know, to reconcile, to do things together, mission together and things like this. And, and I remember this part. Um, so, yeah, uh, it was before a testimony. You know, we, we were supposed to testimony on our relationship. And just before this big argument and, and I am wounded, you are wounded. And, and we were both of us. Um, sitting together and talking about this and you know sometimes you talk but nothing comes out of this I mean I'm wounded you're wounded and we just it's the same old story repeating itself over and over again you know and we're sad and at one point we're in silence I remember precisely the place in Otkon and we were in silence like this and just who cares about the testimony the next day we didn't care about this but just what should we do you know and I think we were sad sad because we just couldn't overcome those wounds that we had. And, and at this point, um, God is great. I, I, I said, come Holy Spirit, in my, just in my head. And at this point, I, I felt an, a, a love for my brother, a big love for my brother. It was really a gift from God, you know, uh, because people who know me know I am, not, I am a, the worst guy in the family. God chose the worst guy to be a priest. <laughs> True story. I'm not making it up for you. Uh, and and I felt a big love for him. And I turned to him and I said, you know, we don't care about this. Uh, I love you and you're my brother. It's just this. And we fell in each other's arm and we're crying. Um, and, and I really experienced this, that God um, 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 did a miracle. And, and it was really a miracle. You know, my father, when he learned that I was getting along with my little brother, this brother in particular, I mean, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. Um, and, and, and I find it so beautiful. And when we were giving the testimony with Tristan, uh, we washed our feet, you know. So I washed his feet. Uh, he washed my feet. It was very, a very strong gesture. Uh, it was so beautiful, you know. And, and, and a lot of people were touched. And it's not... A coincidence that in the Bible there's a lot of relationships difficult between brothers or between brothers and sisters and yeah and 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 I feel it's no merit from my part but I've I, I've experienced this and it's to live again you know it's to to do again but 
but once you've lived it as young people, I think it's it's easier. Mm. And yeah, so uh, before we we met on Zoom, I thought, what am I going to say? What can I say? And I thought, no, at least I can say this. Um, there is hope for our families and uh, for our for a relationship between brothers and sisters and brothers and brothers and 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 of course it's a two way relationship. But uh, yeah, the first step, and especially if you're a big brother or a big sister, to go and see the other one and to humble yourself and to mm -hmm. say, "I'm sorry for this." And you can't imagine, you can't imagine the way they look to you, how important you are for them. Mm. And you can't imagine the path you are opening, you know. Mm. And at some point, humility in this part, it's especially when you're a big brother. Uh, I think it's the only, yeah, the only way. Oh, wow. So, yeah, uh, oh. praise be to God. And uh, yeah, it was great. Um, for me, it's a great story because it's my story, but yes no it's beautiful and i loved seeing you throughout the week um joking around with your brother you can tell that you guys have a close bond so that's really neat to hear the like the mm -hmm. story to get there mm -hmm. yeah that's beautiful well as we close would you mind praying over our listeners whatever comes to mind um a priestly blessing <laughs> yeah <laughs> a real priest um, yeah yeah i can uh of course with uh Thank you. With joy, yeah. Um, so, Lord, thank you for uh, this uh, encounter with Lauren. Um, thank you for all the people that are listening uh, to this podcast. Come and bless them. Uh, I, I would ask them, I would ask, Lord, that you, that you show each of them how precious they are for you, how unique they are for you, um, that you would touch their, yeah, their hearts, uh, thank you for this passionate love you have for each one of them and and i feel like the lord is he's very patient you know and sometimes we could say well if he's so passionate why doesn't he break the door but he he respects and loves everyone so much and uh and yeah i feel some listeners uh god is here he's just behind the door and he he loves you and even if you don't open he loves you um so no pressure <laughs> If you open, it's great, but uh, he he will stay by your side. And Lord, I, I also pray that you would open a path of reconciliation in families. Um, you know how messed up we are sometimes, how we regret things of our past, how uh, the sibling relationships, it's, it's a blessing and sometimes it's a burden. Uh, give us love for one another and... Uh, and show us, you know, help us during those little moments where we can humble ourselves and and free uh, the other person and and bless the other person. And I would really uh, pray, especially for those who are, who think, ah, uh, with my brother, with my sister, impossible, nothing will happen, nothing will open. Uh, I pray that you would give you would give love, you would give a a, a real love. In, in those people's hearts, um, and love can can open every door. You know, love can can do the great job uh, we're expecting for. Thank you, Jesus. And because I'm a Catholic priest, I will pray in the Catholic priest fashion. And I don't have to say this. So when I when I bless people, I often finish like this. Uh, so I don't really know it in English, but I'll try. May God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. This is amazing. But it, it was a pleasure. Thank you. I, I spoke a lot, huh? so I hope it's not too much. You can cut oh, if it's okay. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay.